What's up, big y'all? I'm in front of 50 Orns, the home of uh, Billy and Bobby Nunn of uh, Moto Records. This is where the first black recording uh, producer and artist in Buffalo, New York originated. Billy and Bobby Nunn. William Nunn Sr. in his early 40s was a local factory worker, union leader, and father of two sons, Bobby and Billy Jr. Although morally admirable, his vocation, especially at that time, left a little less than to be desired. He was married to a telephone switchboard operator. His family lived at 50 Orange Street in an impoverished African-American community known to locals as the Fruit Belt because all of the streets are named after fruits. Being a talented saxophonist and having come from a background singing in a local harmony group known as the Parakeets in the early 50s and early 60s, William valued songwriting immensely. With no real local business model, he was forced to improvise resulting in the rather makeshift birth of Modo Records. He began building a music studio in his own basement. Reaching out into his neighborhood, he invited young people into his home to express themselves through music. Offering his own investment and belief in their talent in return for their discipline and hard work, he encouraged his guests to work toward careers as professional recording artists. In addition to the label, Bill Sr. owned two venues, Jan's Supper Club and Club Modo. The latter was short-lived, managing only to stay in business for less than a year. Taking advantage of having a recording studio in his own basement, it should come as no surprise that his first release on the label was recorded by William's own son, Bobby. Bob was a mere adolescent, only 15 years old at the time, and started high school at Hutch Tech, Hutchison Technical School. He formed the dynamic vocal male harmony duo known as Bob and Gene, and his friend Eugene Coplin, a 16-year-old attending East High in the south town of West Seneca. After attending a live performance by Otis Redding and the Five Stair Steps, the boys were so impressed with all of the autograph signing and contagious female adoration, the performers received that they were destined to become stars. When I asked Gene if he ever wanted to be with any attention, he enthusiastically retorted, we wanted to be as big as the Temptations. Thus he began choreographing their own dance routines. Unlike the rest of the releases on Modo Record at 50 Orange Street, Bob and Gene's debut single, Your Name, You Gave Me Love, was recorded at a house in Williamsville, a wealthy suburb north of Buffalo. Their friend, Karen Renshaw, also known as The Runt, sang back up on this release and the bulk of their output. Bobby's girlfriend's favorite billboard chart buster at the time was Linda Jones' Hypnotized, which inspired the group to put the record out on the same shade of yellow label donned by Loma Records. The following releases retained the yellow backdrop until William became so frustrated with the low quality of the rights pressings upon a visit to the plant in Cincinnati. Much to his dismay, 
he found a boy younger than Bobby operating the equipment. Thus, he immediately switched pressing to Queen City albums, another local Cincinnati plant, which explains why don't leave me, girl, I gotta find a way, can be both on both Wright and QCA pressings. All of the following releases used the familiar QCA pastel tricolor flower backdrop. 